this third evolution, it, it felt like the rocket needed refueling. Because I had this time to think, I realized that I couldn't depend on riding a rocket ship, you know, being just a rock star painter to grow as an individual and to, you know, provide for this company and this brand that I've built over this time that now we have to create our own call to action to evolve. Welcome to the Paint Method Podcast. My name is David Garibaldi, and those of you who have been joining us on this uh, Paint Method journey, welcome back to those of you who are new. Welcome to you as well. You know, I started this Paint Method journey not, not too long ago, but it's sort of actually inspired by what we're going to talk about today, about evolving, you know, about trying to discover where you are and what to do next you know, thinking about is this a time to stop or to quit? And what does that feel like? And what steps do you take to evolve? So we'll get into that today. i um, super excited about it. Either way, if this is your first, second, or third, whatever time joining this podcast, uh, we just ask you consider uh, following it if, on any audio platform that you're listening to this on, or if you're watching this on YouTube, consider subscribing, uh, liking it, and also leave a comment down below. It's a huge help to this podcast and this channel. Uh, either way, let's get into today's podcast about when and how to evolve. Let's go. We are all on our paint journey, but where are we now? And where do we go next? This is how passion, action, intent, new, teach. This is the paint method. All right, so I live here in Sacramento, California, and if you're lucky enough to visit, or if you grew up here, you're familiar with this restaurant called Makuni's. Uh, if you're into sushi, then you definitely know this place. If you're not, just come along for the ride uh, on this, this story. So uh, my good friend Taro Arai, who is his official title, is the chief dreaming officer of Makuni Sushi. And his journey is incredible. It's, it's inspiring. And there's a, there's a lot of people that have gone on this path. You know, they've come from another country and, and you know, really made it uh, on their own. His, his journey inspires me for a very particular reason. A little backstory on him. Taro and his family came here in the 1980s and here is in uh, Sacramento, California. At the time, Taro didn't speak any English, and his family also got together some starting capital and started this restaurant. I'm pretty sure that uh, they borrowed it, but either way, once they started this sushi restaurant called Makuni's, uh, it was just a small family restaurant. And like most new businesses or like most new restaurants, it's tough and it's a struggle in the beginning. And it was actually a struggle for them for quite a long time. And then there was this shift when this almost failing small family restaurant started to evolve in so many different ways from the menu to the culture of, of how you felt when you went into uh, the first location. And I say first because it has now evolved over time uh, to, I think, up to nine locations in the Northern California area. And I, I definitely do my part to support them and eat as much sushi as possible. Uh, I've had the opportunity to perform at various anniversary parties they've had from the 20th anniversary to the 30th, 35th. I remember asking Taro this very specific question. I just said, how did you get here? Like, how did you go from a small family restaurant that was failing to this flourishing, highly successful, and highly beloved restaurant and organization in our hometown, Sacramento? And he said, you know why. And I'm like, okay, what, what, is, it, what, is, this, what is this mind game we're playing right here? He said, you know, you, you know why. It's Kaizen, you, you Kaizen, you get this. And I'm like, I don't know what 
Kaizen is, what it means. And he said, you know, Kaizen is a Japanese philosophy about continuous improvement in work and personal efficiency. So I, I stopped and I thought, it's like, yeah, I can, I can definitely relate to that. You know, it's the things don't usually change overnight. You know, most overnight successes were 10 years in the making, preparing for a single moment, evolving over time. And so I really took this to heart when he told me that, you know, it's this mindset of Kaizen, of continuous improvement, work and personal efficiency. So you could look at it like working smarter, not harder. How do you know when it's time to evolve? Like how do, what, is it, what does it feel like? Or are you at a crossroads where you need to stop what you're doing and stop pursuing? Or you can also look at it like, is it time to pivot? I don't know about you, but uh, I've been fortunate enough to do the same thing or similar thing in this art world for the past two decades. But it really feels like I've had three evolutions of a career. Or I would look at it like I've had three different careers over the past 20 years. Now, I will explain that in a little bit. I'm going to share some stories about times in my journey where I hit a wall. And I realize that I either need to stop and pivot or I need to continuously grow and improve and not only work, but also my personal efficiency as well. That whole feeling of hitting a wall, I, I, don't, I also uh, have done this many times in my fitness journey where I'm going, I'm going, and I, I hit this wall. And it's most likely about what I'm eating and not really what I'm, what I'm doing to work out. But some of us experience this on our fitness journeys or health, uh, maybe some uh, career paths that we've been on as well, you know, pursuing a, a career that you went to college for. And now you're in that industry and you're trying to grow within it. And you may feel like, feels like there's a, a glass ceiling here. Like I feel the ceiling, but I don't see it. Or it could even be as simple as if you're pursuing a hobby and it's something that you really want to grow in, but you're still hitting a wall. And usually what that means is that there's little to no progress after a certain point, or you're not seeing any results at all. These are clear signs that it's time to either stop and pivot, or it's a call to action to evolve and to grow. So usually when we get to these places, our first go-to after trying it for so long is we give up. That, that's the, the most comfortable thing. Uh, the other easiest uh, response to the situation is to blame others. You can say simply, you know, people just don't, they don't get me or they're not getting it. Uh, and you can shift that blame anywhere else you could think of. It's usually not looking within and thinking, how do I need to change? And how do I need to change my approach in this situation? Now, evolving doesn't mean to just stop doing everything. And it doesn't mean to just go and quit, quit what you're doing and, and search for something new or even the whole cold turkey approach. That works in probably more destructive situations where you're uh, not growing because of negative things in your life or, or activities that you have that have a negative impact on your life. Before I share these stories with you about how I kind of see these three different careers, how I've had to, to be forced to evolve and each time was a call to action. The, the simple definition of evolve is to come forth gradually into being. It doesn't say that uh, you quit and you changed overnight and the change happened fast. It doesn't even say that you kind of never change. It says to come forth gradually into being over time. When I read that, the way that I translate that is simply doing the work and having patience and knowing that this evolution is going to take time, but also knowing that because of that work, it's inevitable that you will evolve. Now, 
I, I just got to share these, these personal journeys with you. And I'm sharing these because it's easy to look at someone far down the road and think that they never had struggle or they never were faced with these crossroads. But when I started my professional career in 2003, I'm not going to count before that because I was 20 at the time. And before that is just sort of growing up, you know, that, that's just the evolution. And then when you become adult, this is pure responsibility on yourself. So in 2003, I was a nobody. I started painting live at these local jazz clubs and I truly just had a dream. I really just had a dream to uh, become a professional artist. I didn't even know what that looked like. I didn't know what that meant. I just knew that I need to start taking action forward. So this first evolution was uh, just painting live. I started doing commissions. And I remember a friend of mine asking me, and this, this moment, it was a question that changed a lot. And he said, I know where you are today, David. I know you're, you're just starting, you're, you're kind of struggling, trying to get momentum going, but what's the difference between today and years from now when you're a millionaire artist? And what, what's the difference in the habits that you would be doing today? What's the difference in your discipline and how you would be evolving uh, with that? I think simply the money or the success should not be the thing that's forcing you to evolve. Evolving is what leads you to levels of success or growing in your leadership. And so early on, you know, I'm in my, my 20s, you know, from 2003 to 2012, there was a lot of work done in that first 10 years. Uh, I was getting my reps in, I was performing weekly at this local nightclub uh, every Friday night, just performing, people getting to know who I am, getting my name out there, uh, learning from my my failures, and just getting my my reps in. And then also, I was sort of introduced into some other big opportunities as well. I went on a, a short tour with Blue Man Group on an arena tour. Uh, I did some you know Super Bowl uh, parties; those were fun, and just different, I would say, uh, large scale events. I started getting my my feet wet. But then we get to 2012, and this was another interesting evolution. On the outside, you would think that I had already checked off the boxes of growth and success, but internally, I was very comfortable, and I was sort of calling, my, on, I was calling on myself just to make a, a step forward, just in a new direction. And so in 2012, I got this opportunity to go on this TV show, America's Got Talent. And uh, it was the biggest challenge ever to do 90 second paintings on live TV. Each painting had to be done on time, it had to look good, had to be entertaining to the audience as well. And so just that alone, over that nine month process of from auditioning for the show to coming in fourth place, uh, losing to the dogs, which it's all, it's all good, I'm not, bitter anymore about that. But just that alone, I had to evolve as an artist, as a leader, as um, I was a, a new father at the time as well. I mean, there was a lot going on. Getting through to the other side, I just had this new outlook now. I, I felt, I, I had this new feeling of just being uncomfortable, having to grow, trying out this new show where I had dancers helping me out and not knowing if it was going to be, uh, you know, received well in the public. It kind of was, kind of wasn't. But now, from 2012 to 2019, it was like riding a rocket ship. I mean, from doing two separate Vegas residencies, one with Jabberwockies, another one uh, with the America's Got Talent show over a few months, uh, traveling the world you know, every, just about every continent. And then even leading up to 2019, hopping on this tour with KISS around the world. I was, it was a rocket ship. It was, it was the result of what it felt like to create momentum and have a new feeling of evolving and saying, okay, this is a new era. Then we get to 2020. And this is when we are all forced to stop. We're all forced with the call to action to take a breath, to 
to sit and to think, okay, what do we do next in this environment? Most of us didn't choose it. Most of us uh, responded with retreat. Some of us responded and stepped up. And I, I just was excited to just have time to just breathe. You know, it had been, I just got off this rocket ship from, from 2012 to 2019. This third evolution, it, it felt like the rocket needed refueling. Because I had this time to think, I realized that I couldn't depend on riding a rocket ship, you know, being just a rock star painter to grow as an individual and to, you know, provide for this company and this brand that I've built over this time that now we have to create our own call to action to evolve from this point on. And so I, I just started thinking about it like this internally. I have to start investing into the next 10 years, this third evolution as, uh, as an artist and really going from entertainer to educator, doing things like taking the risk and starting this podcast, uh, which is something I've been dreaming about for a long time, but I just had to take the steps to do it. Uh, there's some other projects that I'll be sharing soon that I've been working on since 2020 that I've really had to just put my head down, put in the work, and know that we're gonna create momentum for the next 10 years. Where are you at right now? Are you on the rocket ship? Are you, are you already taken off? Are you coming down right now to refuel that rocket ship? Are you just in the beginning? When I was in, in 2003, just starting, you're like, well, I don't even know where to start. I, I just wanna share a few uh, tools, approaches that may help you that not only did I do then, back in the day or even more recently, but also I'm doing currently, right now, along with you on this, this journey. I think the first thing is, really educating or researching the, the, the line of, of work or the industry that you wanna pursue. And maybe it's not an industry, maybe it's a, a whole new career path. But before you unplug yourself from your current trajectory, go educate and research, what knowledge do I need to approach this? So for example, when I started this podcast, I probably spent more time researching workflow not just getting in front of the camera, which I knew that was inevitable, but also I had to educate myself on how to, how to cast this to multiple audio platforms. I had to research cameras and lighting and, and all these things. And once I put a plan in place, then I just had to start working at it. But that education and research process uh, has helped out in a huge way. The next uh, approach that I would, I would say is try it three different ways. So for example, when I started this, uh, this new TikTok account in 2020, it was so new and so foreign to me. I was very familiar with every other social media platform, but I thought, okay, let's, let's, hop, on, uh, let's hop on this new platform. So I would post videos like I used to on other platforms and some of them would work, some wouldn't. And I would just go back to the videos that wouldn't work. I would, I would take them off. And the ones that would work, I would keep them up. And I would keep doing this time and time again. But I would always give myself at least three different chances. And if a certain type of video was not working three different ways, it was time to stop. It was time to, to pivot. It was, it was time to go. And also, each approach had to be different every single time. So make sure that you're trying at least three different times. But every single approach that you take, it's got to be slightly different or just has to have a different approach. And then the last tool I would give you, at least right now, really working on your vision. And I don't know if you ever take time to meditate or to, to write down your goals, but any way that you can start to fabricate your future, when you start to truly envision it, writing it down, seeing on paper what tomorrow can look like. You've got to start bringing that to life somehow and start envisioning because the clearer that you see that today, the clearer that you can see five, 10 years down the line, you also start to envision every step along the way that it takes to get there. You start to envision 
needing to educate yourself, the different approaches that you can take. And then when you start going down that path, it feels a little bit more familiar and a little bit less strenuous on your spirit. It's inevitable. We're all going to get to this place on our journeys that we hit a wall and it'll be a call to action to stop, to pivot, or is this the moment that I need to evolve? Is this the moment that I need to go research this new direction I want to go into? Do I need to give it a few different approaches? And I'll leave you with this, just going back to what my good friend Taro Arai told us, you know, just how he started his family restaurant with just one struggling location. And at some point, he had, him and his family had a call to action to grow, even just with one, and now they're at nine. It's just this act of continuous improvement and approaching this next step in life, wherever you are, knowing that I've got to improve not only my work, but my personal efficiency everywhere. And it is okay to work smarter and not harder on this journey. Embrace their evolution. I think that's the evolution of you, who you are, who you're becoming. It's inevitable. And the beauty of these journeys is challenging yourself on who you get to become next. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today on today's podcast. Uh, wherever you are, whether you're you know, in the car, at the gym, uh, you know, maybe you're creating in the studio, uh, just ask that you consider subscribing on the YouTube channel that we uh, broadcast this podcast on. Or if you're watching on any audio platform, you consider following that as well. This is the paint method where we discover where we are and create where we go next. Thank you. Thank you.